Hey everybody, Ozzy Viking here to tell you about Battlefront 2015. Now, I bought it for a good price, 28 bucks, got a whole lot of other things. So, when it comes for value of money, well, let's just say two, three days after I bought it, I've gotten that much out of it. It is very fun and addicting. There are problems. Oh god, there are problems. But, at a, at a low price, this is actually a good game. First of all, graphics. As you can see from the footage, it is amazing. Holy crap, even today it looks amazing. This is, playing and looking at the visuals in this game are reminding me when I first saw Crisis Ultra settings, I was blown away and I am blown away by this. It makes you feel like you're in Star Wars and it is amazing. Graphics are a 10 out of 10. You know, even the sound is fantastic. It sounds great. The music, the the, the, the explosions, the, the, the way that the sound is like condensed when you're inside a bubble shield sort of thing is amazing. The maps are huge. There's not many of them in the main game. Of course, if you get the obviously the season pass and stuff, you'll probably get about I think four more bigger maps, like eight all up I think. Each map has got like a, is in sections when you play it, and they're very big, so they, it doesn't really look that bad. And since the graphics are so good, when you move over to every single other one, you're, you're just shot. Now. The graphics here are sort of a down, a downer for some as well because it's so pretty. When you're in a fight, you're like, oh, they look so amazing. Oh my god, there's like flying things everywhere, explosions everywhere. You get shot and you're like, well, shit. I do not want that to happen. And now I'm dead. So I've had a few times where I've died by how beautiful it looks. As you can, as I'm sure everybody in the world has done at least once because it is a fantastic looking game. Now, value for content. Now, it is all multiplayer, sort of. So you do have off. You don't have off offline, but you have the ability to play missions, which is tutorials, missions where you learn some of the basics of what to do, and then you got like a survival mode, which is fun. Survival modes are fun, and the missions are great. The tutorials are great, but overall, that's like two hours. If you if you do it all the time and get every single star in each one, it's going to take like two three hours max. And then the rest of your playtime is going to be online. And after a while, it can get boring online. It's fun, don't get me wrong, it's fun, but you sort of wish that people just... So say there's a hero token, you run to it, someone's just gonna, someone else is going to run to it and get it. And Same with like vehicles and weapons and such. And It's like, oh, that sucks, because people just steal it from you. It's really annoying. And it's good, I mean, it is sort of fun when you steal it from somebody else, but like, when it's you, it's like, oh, it's really come kind of thing, but that kind of sucks. And while there is a lot of content, sort of, with, with just the base game, it feels like you do need the season pass. Now, is this game worth getting? I mean, a year later, most people are like, or almost a year later, people are like, well, no and yes. If instant action comes out, if you're able to play offline modes, in, in either within a patch or something, then yes, this game is totally worth the money. I would say, go out and buy on a, if you buy this game on a good deal like I did, $28 or less, and it's the full game, and you get like that little DLC thing, and they give you instant action where you can play all the modes offline, this game will totally be worth it. And hell, I think if they do instant action and it comes out soon, and it works perfectly, you know, you don't have to be connected to the internet and it works fine, a lot of people will be like, well, screw it, I'm going to buy the season pass because then I can play all these great maps offline and such. And I think I'd do that too. Maybe if the season pass is on a sale, but I'll be like, you know what? Not a bad deal. I bought $28 for the main game. And if you if you took the money, technically, if you took the tw everything that I got with that in that bundle and like your piece to how much they cost, I probably paid five, ten bucks for the Battlefront game. So technically, paying, and I think it's $70 for the, in Australia for the, uh, the season pass. So maybe. If I get it on sale, I'll get it for $60, $50, so about $60, $70 all up to pay for the game with all its content is not a bad deal, especially if you can play it offline. But that's if the offline works. I, I trust DICE, but I do not trust EA. Never trust EA. They want your money, not your respect. 
and the only way they can get our respect if they go, you know what, maybe we have been asking a bit too much from our audience. Let's 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 give them some free stuff, which we can only hope can happen. Uh, yeah, I, I really, I still don't understand how they kind of effed up with um, Battlefront because I can't help but feel like you when Battlefront was announced, it was about 2013. And by the time it came out, it was about two and a half years, three years later. And it's like, that's normal sort of working method on a game. And it's like, well, why couldn't you give us more content? I mean, but then when you realize how great the graphics are and such, you kind of feel like they spent too much time on graphics, less time on content. Because, hey, 70 bucks, get the rest of the content, you know? They have given us some free stuff, but I don't know. I actually don't know what that is. I don't know if there's new maps. I don't know if there's new characters. I really don't know. I wouldn't, I probably isn't because I don't think EA would like that. We can't give them good maps. We can't give them free characters for free. What is this? Are we a charity? Never. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you, EA. But overall, it is a fun game. I've played 10 plus hours of it. I've had a great time. And honestly, I'll probably play a bit more before I stop and go, I'm going to wait for instant action. Because as soon as instant action comes out, I'm playing this a lot more. Uh, once instant action is available for this game, it will be a it will be like a not not a full on must have, but it'll be a game that you should really get. And what is good is they're listening. So if they give us instant action and some single player stuff, then it's like, well, hey, we got Battlefront two coming out in twenty seventeen, most likely. Guess what? You guys you guys get it. You guys get to have Battlefront two with a campaign, uh, offline modes, and yeah, which I think is fine because when you think about it. EA, not EA, uh, DICE have got the engine down packed. They've got the engine, they've got all the, the, you know, the renders, the models they need. So really, all they have to do is take Battlefront 1, transfer it, and by transfer it, I mean just take Battlefront 1, up the graphics slightly, or a lot if they can, either way, add new maps, add new modes, in action, of course, offline, and a campaign. I wouldn't surprise me if it takes about two years, and they probably will start working on Battlefront 2. I think it was even said they started working on Battlefront 2 before they the first one even came out, so there's that too. I am looking forward to a Battlefront 2, but I, I'm still going to be a bit on edge because I'll be like, well, EA, you, you can't fully trust EA. I mean, for Christ's sake, when Mass Effect 3 came out and the ending was shit, EA's like, oh yeah, here's, here's the extended cut, but it was only available for like, apparently for a year or two. It's like, yeah, we're, we're, it's only going to be available for a limited time. It's like, why the fuck are you giving us a limited time value? For free DLC, it's like what the fuck, EA? Eh? Fuck you. <sighs> they are like Activision. They might get better. I'm hoping they get better. And if we keep complaining to EA that hey, you're screwing us over, we don't like it, then they will get better. So there's that. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Battlefront One. It's actually a good game and worth your money if you can get it for a cheap price. And it will definitely be worth your money if they bring in an offline instant action mode in a patch. If you have to pay for it, tell them to get fucked. Thing is, I wouldn't put that past EA. So, Dice, what are you doing? Well, we've got this instant action mode offline because people really want it. We're like, well, you know what? We've given them what they want. So they got that. So then we do number two, add that stuff in as well. So we know, so we're good to go. You know, this is just uh, to say, hey, we put it in. Any mistakes we have with this instant action mode, we can fix number two. Oh, great. How much are you charging for it? It's free. No, it's not. It's free. No, it's not. You should, but no, no, we really want it to be. It's not free. We're EA here. We want money. Give us the money. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that actually happened. Uh, tell you, the only good damn devel developers out there are really CD Projekt Red. Here's 16 free DLC and all these free patches. You get some great content. Uh, and the paid DLC, which is less for a season pass than most full games, is a full game's worth of content. Uh, anyway. Anyway, that's the Aussie Viking out. Again, really enjoyed the game. Really having fun. There isn't much bad I can really say. I mean, I do miss going into vehicles and be able to like go Y button in the vehicle and you gotta take off instead of just grab a token and then you teleport into one. But that's sort of a minor grab for some for some people that's a minor grab, for some it's a huge one. For me it's sort of in between. Anyway. I'll see if I can out. I shall see you all in Valhalla. Bye.